So uh, again, thank you very much for coming. Um, my name is uh, Javier Colomino. Uh, I'm going to very briefly uh, show you uh, how to test uh, or how to evaluate the uh, electronic chemical condition of a uh, medium voltage circuit breaker using the PME 500 CR and circuit breaker analyzer. Okay, so this is uh, the setup we have. Uh, this is the circuit breaker we are going to test. <laughs> so it's a three phase breaker. Uh, and for this uh, particular session, we have uh, furnished. Uh, this breaker with uh, a group of batteries in order to energize the, uh, the spring loading motor, uh, operation uh, coils, and so on. The breaker is uh, already partially connected to the instrument, which is here. The instrument is a PME 500 TR, it's a three phase timer, uh, including also uh, some features like. Uh, uh, contact resistance uh, measurement, okay, which is not very common to find in regular uh, circuit breaker analyzers. Uh, also here you can see well the, the, the groups of uh, of multi connectors. Uh, these uh, four groups I will show you now on the screen. Uh, what uh, what do they do? Uh, okay, they uh, connect the instrument to the breaker to the different sections of the breaker, mainly the coil control, the uh, main contacts, I mean the, the high voltage contacts, auxiliary contacts to compare the timing with the main contacts as well, and the contact resistance uh, voltmeter. And also you can see here a uh, data connection, which is now uh, installed, uh, connecting to my computer in order to show you how to transfer the results of the test to the computer uh, at the end. This is the objective of, of this test. Uh, finally, what we need to get is a report showing the synchronization of the open and closed movements in the main contacts in the circuit breaker. Uh, as you can see here, in, in this section of the graphic, you can see a chronograph uh, showing in uh, solid black the uh, closed, closed uh, status of the circuit breaker, of the circuit breaker, the main contacts in the breaker. So uh, as I was saying, um, what you have here, it, this is a, a test sequence of a closing, opening, and closing, as you can see here in the report. And the tested sequence is a close, open, close. And you can see the activity of the main contacts, closing here, opening here, and then re-closing here again. And also of uh, the activity of two additional contacts, uh, which is represented in the upper uh, lines in the in the, in the chroma. So, so these are the auxiliary contacts. This is another break. This is a different break than the, than the one that we have. Here. And also in the in the upper section of the graphic, what you get is a is a coil current, a vibration coil current. In, in this section here, you have the closing coil activity and in the, the current going across the close closing coil within the close command. Then you have the open coil here, okay, and then again the closing coil here. In the same report you can see also a contact resistance measurement in the, in the three phases. This is the breaker we are testing. Okay, quite quite tall breaker, but it's very useful to show the uh, the principles of the basic operation of uh, of a circuit breaker. In this case, a, a small volume of all circuit breaker. And this is the instrument we are, we are using, the PME 500 TR. This instrument is a, basically a three-phase timer. Okay? This is able to uh, register uh, timestamps for any change in the main contacts and two auxiliary contacts with a resolution of one-tenth of a millisecond. It will also uh, uh, make a graph and record coil currents uh, sampled at a rate of 10 kilohertz. And we'll also measure the uh, contact resistance in the main contacts when they are closed. You also have a built-in printer which are which are table batteries which, which allows you to, to use the use the unit uh, with no mains AC. 
Uh, it has non blood and memory, of course, to save the results. It can be connected to a PC to download the results to the PC, and it is also uh, uh, furnished with uh, Windows software for that purpose. Okay, what you can see here is that is a mechanical indicator synchronized with the movement or with the position of the circuit breaker. So now I'm going to issue manual close uh, so you can see how it works. I'm first going to energize the breaker. So as, as you see the, uh, the breaker stays in the same open position that now the springs, the operation springs are rounded. Okay. So it's ready for the first test. I want to uh, describe how our the connections to the main contact. In the screen you can see a schematic diagram showing the multi connectors going from the instrument. First multi connector going to the coil control in the breaker, second one going to the main contacts, and the last one here going also to the main contacts for contact resistance. This is what I'm going to show you now. These are the main contacts connections. Okay, two of the two of the faces are already connected. To save some time, and there's one uh, face left that, that I'm going to use to show you how to connect the pairs of uh, terminals coming from the main contact and contact resistance multi connectors. So basically, what I get from those multi connectors are these three pairs of contacts. They are two reds and two blacks, one reds and two blacks. If I take them pair by pairs, I will, I will see that uh, one of the two reds is labeled with an R, okay, which means resistance measurement. And the other red one is labeled with a Z. So uh, I am going to use one of the reds for resistance measurement and one and the other one for current. And the same with the two blacks, okay? The two blacks are correspondingly labeled as resistance measurement and contact. Okay. So what I'm going to uh, do is to place uh, these pairs on once on each side of the uh, circuit breaker. Now look at this. You see the circuit breaker is uh, already partially uh, connected. And I, I see that the red connections have been used on the upper plates. So I have to be consistent and place the red connections on the upper plates. So I take the R connection, which is for resistance, and place it here. I will show you why I'm placing it here and not here. The other way, here. With the, two, with the blacks and do the same on the lower plate of the pole. It is not the pole, this is the pole, the chamber, the, the breaking chamber, and uh, the connection is being opened and closed here inside. So I take the uh, contact, I mean the terminal labeled as R for resistance and place it here, and the con the Terminal labeled as C and place it here. So you see, I have placed the R terminals here and here. If you look at the uh, geometry, at the geometry of the plates, you, you possibly will see the plates better here. You see the plates are coming inside the chamber in this direction. So the, the upper connection in, in each plate it are closer to the contact inside the chamber than the lower connection in each plate. We see here how the C labeled terminals are placed on the outside of the connection, here and here, the reds and the blacks, and the R labeled for contact resistance are placed inside the connection, I mean closer to the chamber than the C connection. This corresponds 
to the typical connections in a micrometer. This is what we call the four wire or four terminal connections in a micrometer or Kelvin connection. In the Kelvin connection, you have a current injector injecting, generating some current across the conductor here. And then you have voltage drop terminals to both sides of the point which conduct resistance you want to measure. So you always place the contact resistance or voltage drop terminals as close as possible to the measured spot. And then you can place the current injection the spots of connection wherever you wish. It doesn't matter. Even a fast loop to the multi connectors in the, in the instrument, you have the control. A multi connector here, which is connected to the control coils, the operation coils in the breaker. Okay, you can possibly see here a group of connections, two of which correspond to the coils and to the close and open coils in the breaker. And I will uh, start showing you the basic operation, how we uh, set up the test and prepare the instrument to perform the test we want to do. You can see here the, uh, let me show you here, uh, the, the PME 500 TR and touch screen distributed in uh, four main tabs. This is the results tab, the graphic results. This is the numerical results. This is the settings for the, for the test, and this is the data tab. If we go to the data tab, what we find there is a uh, just the uh, text fields that uh, you can modify by using the uh, built-in keyboard. Okay, you can enter information on the te uh, text screens, basically to document the text. Exit from here and go to the settings, uh, to the settings uh, tab here, where you can basically define the type of test you want to do. Okay, this is the first option. You see, uh, now it is selected C and O, which is a sequence uh, by which the uh, breaker will be commanded to perform a close operation followed by an open operation. So it will be a close open sequence. Then in the, in the, second, uh, in the second field, in the duration field, you have a uh, a group of nano figures indicating the length or the duration in milliseconds of the corresponding commands. For example, in this case, we have 100 milliseconds for the closed command, 100 milliseconds for the open command, and two zeros indicating that we are not setting any wait time between two consecutive commands. You also have another uh, number of options or also indicating the resolution of the graphics you want to get, the, the event that will trigger, the, the, uh, that will start the chronometer and so on. And let's start with a simple closed open test. We exit from the settings by going directly to the test screen. In the test screen you can see there are a, a couple of buttons that allow you to operate manually the interior breaker. This is very useful to check that your control connections are correct. Okay, that you are connecting properly the instrument to the operation code in the, in the circuit breaker. If you have any errors, these manual buttons here will not operate. So now we can, for example, we can issue a manual uh, close command as the instrument is uh, is now open, as you can see the dial, the dial here. This is, this is open. So we can issue manually a close command, so you can see it. Why I say manually? I say manually because there is a difference between manually and automatic. If I do it manually, it will not be recorded anywhere. It will not take part of the report. It will just be issued to the breaker, but will not produce any, any results or any recording. So I will issue now a closing command. Let's 
recover the initial open in order to perform the closed open sequence for the test. We are coming back to the initial position. And now we are going to press start stop in order to execute the test that we have programmed, which is a closed open sequence. Okay. So we, uh, we press with, uh, when, when I press here, you will see that it takes uh, approximately one second and a half for the unit to initialize the test before the first command is actually uh, issued to the circuit breaker. We start. <laughs> Position. So we are in the same position as we were in the beginning. So we can exit the test screen here. And we can see the results on the screen. This is the low resolution representation. Okay, just for you to check that uh, the results are consistent with the test you have programmed. The three phases are represented. Uh, some of the very complex are also, also connected to the instrument but also represented. There is, there is a small uh, graph indicating some coil uh, current and so on. Okay. It is a low resolution image that helps you to uh, assess that the test has been uh, successfully uh, finished. Also, in the rest tab, you have the numerical results. So you have three pairs of results, which are the closed and open time stamps for each phase. So you can see that the first phase uh, finished the closing command at 114.4 uh, uh, milliseconds after the start of the test. In the second, in the second phase, it was very, very similar and also in the third phase. And then you have the timestamps for the open. Okay, so you found close and open here. So, uh, and also we can navigate and see. We don't have any contact resistance measurement because we haven't measured. So let's go and measure it now. Let's go to the test. But you, you, you see that the circuit breaker is, is open now. So we are going to do this measurement. We need to close the uh, breaker now in order to perform the, uh, the contact resistance measure. So we issue a manually closed command. <laughs> and now that we are in the closed position, we can uh, press the contact resistance measure, uh, measurement button here. It will take just a small, a short while to make the measurement and it's done. So we come back to the results. To the results tab. And now you can see three values for, uh, for contact resistance. You have uh, 0 0.216 milliamps for the test phase. Then you have 84 micro ohms for the second phase and 94 micro ohms for the third phase. So these are mm, uh, quite uh, different values. This is intentionally done because this is a break that we use for training people. These results, I want to have a big dot. You can see, I think, uh, let me move this slightly. Okay. And now you can see that uh, the information is better distributed throughout all the length of the printout area. So we can see more details about the timing of the main contacts, which are in the bottom, in the bottom of the of the image. Okay, the three main contacts and two auxiliary contacts uh, that 
uh, being also connected to the instrument from the CPU breaker. Namely, the, the coin control lines. Okay, these are these are the other two traces that you are uh, seeing on the top of the graphics. So, uh, very quickly, I'm going to show you how to uh, export all this to the, to the computer. What I'm going to do is to save it into memory. I can select you know, uh, folders. In the, in the saving area and storage area. For example, folder number two is empty. I'm going to save it here. So it's to the computer screen and open your breaker. Okay, so we have a new breaker here. And it is uh, looking at uh, an instrument connected on COM4. It has found it. Okay, it is asking me if I want to download the entire contents of uh, of the memory. I say no. I just I just want to download the test that we have done today. So we go to setup two and click on download the sector. That is downloading. You can see the progress here on the, in the lower part of the screen. Okay, you can also see the serial number of the instrument connected. Let's make the screen smaller. We can directly uh, preview the results on this small screen. So I can see it in larger size. So this is the largest size. It will automatically take a graphic here, a logo of your company, if you have placed a graphic file with your company logo uh, on the uh, on the installation directory of your page. You just place that file there, name logo, and it will be automatically inserted in every report that you produce. You can export it with the report to a PDF or an image file. You can also send it right away from here by email to somebody. Hello? Uh, to that. Yes. Yes, hello. I can hear you. Hi, Xavier. Uh, very nice, very mm -hmm. nice tutorial. Uh, my name is Theo, uh, and I'm from Orange. I work with Orange Engineering in Ireland, and uh, it happens yeah. that we use we use them uh, two of them units. Uh, we use them quite regularly for um, for our maintenance and everyday tests. Okay. And the question, uh, I think it's very important that you underline that uh, thing about the. Um, the Kelvin bridge or the four wire method for contact resistance, because as you said, indeed you need to have the the resistance lead or yeah, basically the lead that's doing the, the contact resistance measurement. You need to have that on the inside of the as close as possible to the contact that you're measuring. Yes. Uh, our question, our question would be, uh, we I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly. What current is um, what current is being injected when when you're doing the contact resistance? What what current uh, is the unit delivering? The unit is able to inject the maximum of ten amperes, one zero, ten amperes. Okay, but it will adjust. Ten the, okay, ten yeah, It will adjust the, the actual current to the minimum possible. You know, in order to uh, take the minimum uh, power from the battery as possible. So if it, if it finds that uh, the uh, the resistance is large, it will use very very small current. But if the if the resistance is very low, it will use much more current in order to increase the the voltage drop. So it will automatically okay. adjust. But the maximum is ten amperes. Yeah, the the reason why I'm asking is because we had some discussions inside in the company, and um, from what we were able to check in the standards, the standards would say. A minimum of 50 amps according to the IEC and 100 amps according to the ANSI standard. Now, obviously, the unit is not going to inject that. Now, the only problem which, which the only problem you would have is you would be thinking how accurate would the measurement be then? You know, if you're not actually injecting the higher current, because you need some. Let's say you could, you need a higher current for for a higher currency, and I, I I I would say you agree with me on this. Yes, I know, I know what you mean, Theo. I know what you mean. 
the best uh, way you can test, I mean, you can uh, check how uh, how accurate is the PME 500 is by using another instrument, <laughs> okay? Uh, you just use another instrument and compare the reading. And you will yeah, that's right. that's that's to in fairness, in fairness, this is what we do, and uh, I I I I actually did that, and I was able to see that with your units, and we then injected a hundred times to get the same readings, and we were very happy. Uh, we we were actually very happy, and that means that the units you you have uh, and the unit you presented there is doing what is doing a great job, to be honest. And um, in terms of saving time on site, that's that's something very useful because you get to do two tests in one go with a single device, and that's that's a very good thing. We always we always double check it to be honest, just to make sure that we have um, we have the right reading regarding the contact resistance, and I guess that's the only way, isn't it? Yeah, well, uh, many many people does it, you know, because uh, most most people like you are forced to uh, use a second instrument, a micrometer, which is able to inject uh, 50, uh, 50 amperes or, or even more in some companies or yeah. in some institutions. Uh, they uh, they oblige you to use a minimum 100 amperes, you know? So, okay. yeah, yeah, almost yeah. many people is forced to, uh, to carry um, also a, a micrometer, a specialized instrument for that. But most of the people using the PME 500 TR uh, you, uh, usually make this double check that you mentioned, okay? Because in this yeah, way, yeah, yeah, in this way they check that the, their micrometer is working properly. Okay, so yeah. That's no, that's that's just that's just something I yeah uh, I, I know that I think I think uh, you have as well units that are capable of injecting more current. But they are specifically designed for for contact resistance. If I if I'm right, and I, I think I've seen something on your site there. Yeah, you know the, the the goal was to make a small and very portable instrument. You know, in order to achieve exactly. such such, uh, such a current, you need you need larger instrument, more heavy, and uh, that yeah. was not the Obviously, goal. Yeah, 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 with a, with a bigger capacity. Of, of, yeah. <laughs> No, that, that would have been that would have been the only that would have been maybe the only confirmation we needed because the units are great. We use them for quite a few years and we're very happy. And congratulations to you guys for for what well, you're doing. I think thanks everybody. I think it's it, it's a great it's a great device and we're happy to continue to use it. Basically, that's that's all. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Tim. I, I love your work. No worries. <laughs> and uh, also, I did. Yeah. yeah so, so, that was all. Thanks, Emil. Thanks, thanks very much. Okay, okay. So, thanks very much for your attendance. I hope uh, we can uh, see you here back again on uh, future uh, seminars. Thanks very much. Bye.